1994, Flare Software unleashed Wiz onto the world, debuting on the Amiga. We are taking a look at the standard Amiga version here. There was also an AGA version that featured parallax scrolling, but sadly I don't have the ability to show you that version. Wiz is one of the few 3D platformers on the Amiga to use an isometric viewpoint. The controls reflect this, with moving the controller to the right actually moving the character down and right, moving it down and right, moving the character down directly, and so on. Each level is played out against a time limit, and the paths through the level aren't always clear cut. There are four different types of doors in each area, each of which needs a particular icon to pass. Enemies can be avoided, which may be the best option, as killing them can cost you some energy. Saying that, many enemies also drop items that will replenish your energy, while others drop stuff that will take it away. A bit of a gamble, really. Overall, Wiz isn't a bad game, but the controls will annoy many people, and for those who don't get annoyed by them, you will need time to master them. Talking of controls, I'm sure there is something wrong with mine. Wiz just won't stop spinning. What's going on? The first port is to the Amiga CD32, which is identical to the AGA version of the Amiga game, but now with a CD soundtrack. What we have here is a much nicer looking game. Sure, it still plays in a box, but now we have parallax scrolling, which is a great improvement over the plain coloured backgrounds of the original. Sadly the frame rate isn't too hot compared to the later console ports, but it is still a pretty solid game. It is just a shame that the time limit is so strict on this one. Next we are going to take a look at DOS. Now depending upon how good your PC was, really did make or break this game. If you had a fairly good PC for the time, you could run this with parallax scrolling, as I'm showing here. Otherwise you'd be stuck with the plain backgrounds like seen on the Amiga. This DOS port plays in a smaller window, but it does at least seem to run at a higher resolution than the Amiga version. The audio is subjective in most parts, depending on what sound card you had running. Be it the Sound Blaster, General MIDI, Gravis Ultra Sound, or one of the few Roland options. I'm using Sound Blaster Audio here, which is not too bad. Sadly, I'm playing this game with the keyboard, and I just can't get my head around the controls. So, you're not going to see much of this port.
next version was on the Super Nintendo, and this is quite a surprising port. You'd expect this to be slow and missing enemies, but no. It's actually an improvement upon the PC version, which was an improvement upon the Amiga version. The fact that Titus released this is a miracle. It wasn't developed by them though. This was done in-house by Flair. As you can see, graphically, this is running at a lower resolution than the PC version, but adds in another layer of graphical detail, from rain effects to fog or clouds. The speed is also faster and the controls are tight. So far this may just be the best version of Wiz, but will it be the best version overall? And here we go with the PlayStation port, developed by Fleur Software. And as to be expected, the opening has been replaced with a CD intro that has aged so poorly. This really does look like crap. In game the graphics have been given a facelift, but surprisingly, the extra level of detail such as rain and clouds from the Super Famicom version is missing. As far as playability is concerned, it's just the same as the Super Famicom version. No real difference. And finally we get to the Saturn release, also developed by Flare Software and featuring some changes from the PlayStation version. First change I noticed was that Wiz does not appear on the title screen, which is strange. The start and the options menu do have little wavy animations now though. In game the graphics are the same as the PlayStation version, but there are instances in which the Saturn version suffers from sprite flicker. Obviously Flare Software had no idea how to use the Saturn's hardware. There are some plus points in game though. When you die, there is a nice sprite scaling effect, and once the level is complete, the score tallies up on the map screen, leaving the FMV section to be viewed without obstruction. Besides those changes and a change in fonts, this and the PlayStation version are basically the same. And let's take a look at all those versions of Wiz running side by side. 